This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Here we go. Run Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bacardi, live passionately, drink responsibly. Bacardi, and by Mahindra. Find your nearest Mahindra dealer at texasmahindradealers.com. Now, your hosts, Taylor Stern and Brad Shan. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to the Cowboys Hour. And uh, thanks for those of you who come out on a, on a wet night, and we are here on our regular Monday night stop. Well, our regular Monday night stop is actually right out there on the porch of uh, Neighborhood Services at the Omni Frisco, but this didn't seem to be the right evening to be out there. It's a little cold. It's a little cold. Yeah. It's a little wet. <laughs> so, uh, so we are, again, uh, delighted to be right inside the Ford Center at the Star, and uh, delighted to welcome Cowboys receiver Deontay Thompson. Thank Woo! you very much for being here. No problem. Thanks for having me. And we are going in a moment making a making a Hollywoodish kind of a uh, stage entrance. Will be uh, tight end Rico Gathers. That'll be coming right up. Uh, but Deontay is here, and we're just going to do uh, a little table setting. And thanks uh, to those of you who have come out. Thanks to those of you who are joining us anywhere on the. Cowboys Radio Network. Thanks to those of you who are watching and listening, streamed, including live, on DallasCowboys.com. Alex is fixing the little camera boxes even as we speak. So, Taylor, we have a, we we have a great crowd, don't we? We, we have a great there? crowd. You know why? We have a fan from Bermuda. It's That's Victory Monday. That's Victory why. Monday. Bermuda. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, GT, they're, they're waving their flag. Oh, it, yeah. it is Victory Monday after the Cowboys' most complete game in a calendar year and certainly the best one this year. And uh, we'll have... This kind of a uh, we'll have this kind of a good time every Monday night at six, with a few exceptions. Uh, when we'll be on different nights, we'll tell you more about that later on. But uh, so Deontay, let's talk about Victory Monday, yep. especially when you've been when the team's been kind of trying to find out its identity, okay. especially on the offensive side of the ball, trying to get it going a little bit. When you have a day like that yesterday, and especially at home, mm -hmm. so so how, what is Victory Monday like then? Man, it's great, man. You know, it's the day that we, we get off. You know, we get to, <laughs> some time to kick it with the family and whatnot. But um, it was great, man. I think we really played a full game yesterday. Offense came out, played a hell of a game. And um, we just got to keep stacking those kind of games, keep getting these Victory Mondays. And... Sky's the limit. This, this, Sky was, the limit. Th this was such a good victory Monday that uh, the head coach gave them a victory Tuesday as well. So the players yeah. will be mostly off tomorrow, and you get a bye in two weeks. And everybody's got some little stuff going around. you got a hamstring that's yeah. slowing hammy. you down a little bit. Yeah, just a little hammy, like we said. Yeah, just a <laughs> that's little our hammy. nickname for it. Yeah. But, yeah, um, everybody, you know, it's that time, you know. But everybody good, you know. We love this game. You're going to fight through it, play through whatever. You know, it's definitely if you can go, you're going to try to go put it all on the line for your teammates. But it's all good. You know, we it's what we do. The uh, most prevalent question being asked by Cowboy fans all over Cowboys Nation, wherever they are today, as you know, is where's that offense been for uh, for the last five weeks? And and you are, you know, a critical part of it. And you were you, were you not in the group of receivers that went with Dak and, and oh, yeah, went with through? Now, yeah. So, you know, it's it's not like people haven't been trying to establish some rapport and yeah. rhythm in the passing game. So as a veteran who's been with more than one team, you have a little perspective. What What do you think? happened to make things gel yesterday and what can you tell these nice people who came out on a cold rainy night uh to make them feel good about it happening again i mean just you know it's that time i think we just get in our groove man um we was having a conversation last night after the game just just guys just finding themselves you know um just off, this is the first time this group been together you know it's a whole bunch of new faces i'm a new face um and so it's just getting familiar with each other just playing with each other getting that chemistry uh that being comfortable, you know, a lot of us missed a lot of time in training camp too. So it's just, you know, we just been making up time as the, the, each week. So each week's been getting better and better. We just got to keep stacking off this one. You mean training camp's important? Oh yeah, it's important. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Definitely Dak important. That's where your team is made at training camp. Yeah, Dak said last night in the locker room, you know, all these questions about the offense this week, and he said, 
I don't question these guys. I know these guys. It's, well, it's y'all that question that. Do you yeah. just feel that that relationship between you and Dak and the receivers? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Every time somebody asks me about it, I'll be like, man, Dak, is, he's a hell of a player. You know, that's the same guy that went 13-2 a couple years ago. So and he shows every day in practice. You know, he's he one of those guys. He's a great leader, great leader. I mean, that's one thing I was surprised the most when I was coming here, that he's be such a young guy, be a great leader. But just – us being together every day, we know what we can do. You know, he know he believe in us. We believe in him um, all the way around from the offensive line, the wide outs, running backs. Everyone believe in each other. I mean, we together every day. We see it. So, you've been on really successful uh, college team. Went to Florida. Yeah. Uh, played for very. In, in fact, uh, hold up your hand if you knew. Not you guys. You already knew. Hold, hold up your hand if you knew that that uh, Deontay played with Tim Tebow at Florida. Oh, we have you one know, guy up Okay, here. okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all folks are truth tellers out there because I didn't. We have some. On, oh, we have one guy back. No, there. no, you can't. Now you can't come in after we said it and say you knew. Yeah, okay. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But my, the point is, you you know what uh, what a winning uh, program looks like, you and you know what the struggles look like. Um, yeah. So especially at this level. Yeah. What is it a cliche to say that a game like yesterday can be a real confidence builder? for an offense or is that the truth and if it's the truth why i mean it's definitely a confident builder and it's it's the truth because we did it but it's definitely a confident builder you know just knowing that you can go out there and do that you know we scored 40 points yesterday it's the most we scored all season so just going to do that and then doing it again just building that confidence and just stacking it up every week so so when you were in uh, Baltimore or won a Super Bowl ring in Baltimore, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, knows about that too. He, he, yeah. he has two titles. He not only got the one in Baltimore with yep. the Ravens, the Super Bowl, but 2009 yep. college Super football Bowl. champions. Yeah, uh, Super Bowl, college, and high school. And, and high. high school. <laughs> yeah, all three. Okay, well, now, now, we, now we see, if you wondered at all, why they want a guy who is a winner uh, to be here. So um, the thing that's so interesting to me a lot is that uh, people like Taylor and I talk about players uh, gaining confidence. Exactly. Fans hear about it, but you're the best of the best. You're pros. You would think you had plenty of confidence. How does that confidence thing work in a team concept? Um, just believing in the man beside you. You know, that's the confidence. You know, just being trusting that that guy's going to do his job. So don't be worrying about his job. You do your job. And it's a collective effort. You know, it's 11 guys doing 11 different things. It's 11 different, well, 11 battles going on to make one play. So mm -hmm. it's a lot going on. You just got to trust the guy next to you and just build a camaraderie with him. Yeah, and Brad brought it up a little bit earlier. You know, you guys are, it's a new team. Yeah. This year, more than any other years, it's a lot of new faces, especially in the wide receivers group. Exactly. And you guys went down to Florida with Dak, and yeah. you had kind of a long fishing weekend, or yeah, we you went, explain uh, that? We went to um, Disney. Went to throw out at Disney for a little bit. That was fun. Um, went fishing. Uh, we just went there for like three, four days, did a few things. We, we worked and hung out. It was good coming around. It was great. It was you, Alan Hearns. Um, who else? Tavon? Tavon didn't make it. It was me, Alan. Um, Lenore. Lenore. Nice. Michael Gallup. And um, that's it. I think so that was probably it. huge because yeah. it was before training camp. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, it was good. It was good that we got a chance to do that. Did, uh, did Dak pick up the tab for that? He did. He yeah, picked good. up most okay. of it. Yes, he did. Yeah, well, he did. Okay. He picked I mean, it up. I know he's still on his rookie contract, but okay, that's yeah. good. He's oh, the yeah. quarterback. Yeah. No, he took care of his guys. He, he took care he's, of us. He's the quarterback. He, he should do that. What does that kind of thing do to help build chemistry in the room? Because as you said, you're so new. I think, yeah. I think, well, Lance was around last year. Cole Beasley, of course. Terrence Williams, who's on injured reserve now. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and Noah Brown, who's on injured reserve. So, but that's, there's a lot of new yeah, trying to get faces. together. Tell, just tell the people what, that, what the importance of that is and how do you do it? How do you get to be a cohesive unit? I'm just hanging out. I mean, that's why I say that trip was great, you know, for us, you know, us being together, just getting to know each other on another level, yeah. you know, outside of the building, outside of football, just hanging out, being buds, you know, and just, you know, you, you, when you meet him, when you meet his family, now you know his family. You're playing for his family. You know, it's, it's different now. So. You know what they're working for. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. when you went to Disney, before you went fishing, yeah. did you go deep sea fishing? Deep sea fishing. Did, did, are you a deep sea fisherman? That's my first time. I actually got <laughs> sick, man. I got sick on the trip. <laughs> Just sitting there, head in your hands. Yeah, I got sick in the trip, man, but it was fun. All right, before the deep sea fishing, you went to Disney. Yeah, it was at Disney. What, what's your favorite ride at Disney? 
Oh, we didn't get to ride any rides, really. We was there for work. <laughs> <laughs> but we was just we hung out there a little bit. Uh, that train there, I guess, when he was oh, coming right. out. Okay. Yeah. So we just was hanging around the facilities and stuff, just chilling and, and working for the most part. Well, we that- did go to... Um, uh, Woody, what is it? Uh, oh, I saw that picture. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what with the Toy was. Story. Toy Story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're saying all these new faces, and that's very true. A lot of you wait guys till she never grows been. up a little bit more, and then you'll be going back right to Toy Story. I know, going right? back to Disneyland. <laughs> well, all of you guys haven't been on the same team together, but you have been with uh, Coach Sanjay Law, the wide receivers coach mm-hmm. before at the Bills. Were you excited to reunite with him? Yeah, I was excited. I was excited. You know, uh, me and him never really lost communication. We always used to text um, throughout the seasons and stuff. And really? That's Yeah, unique. he'll see me, some highlights from me and stuff. He'll text me good play. He even coached me up from afar. So that's just <laughs> he's my guy. He's a great guy, man, and just a privilege to be able to play for a guy like that. He seems like a player's coach. He definitely is. And, definitely yet, is. and yet he seems also to be a little bit of a taskmaster. He seems to be a technician yeah. and a guy who has – very definite ideas about how he wants you to get into routes, get out of routes, exactly. run routes. Tell everybody a little bit about that. Uh, he really just a guy that pick up on the small things, you know, things that you, you know, we, we make it to the pros and things you forget about, just how you step off your release. He just big on the small things, the, 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 the small things that make a big difference. So he just, that's one thing I can say, and he's a technician. You know, he's one of the best at breaking the guy all the way down and, and making him how he wants you. So. He's good. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, more with Deontay Thompson. Those of you who have braved uh, the cold uh, we and the rain, we uh, if you have questions later in the show, hold your hand up. Stephen's going to come around with a microphone. And uh, Rico Gathers will be along shortly. And we are delighted to have everyone with us tonight on the Cowboys Hour. Woo! Brought to you in part by Omni. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations, coast to coast, with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're brought to you also in part by Lucchese. Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots, as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is... Lucchese Bootmaker. Oh, you're getting better and better at that. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. Like Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham and Taylor Stern. We're with Cowboys receiver Deontay Thompson. Woo. Thank you again for coming out. No problem. And uh, Rico Gathers is in the building, so uh, the He's Cowboys the tight building. end will be here momentarily. Thanks again to all of you who have come out uh, this evening and uh, and braved uh, the cold to get in here in the warm. We're very happy to have you here. Next week, I do want to tell you we're going to be on Tuesday night. There's some travel logistics uh, on the uh, return from the trip from Washington that demand that the Cowboys uh, uh, are going to be, that we will be available on Tuesday night. And so that's when next week's show will be going into the bye, and we will have one on Monday night coming out of the bye week. No game, but always a Cowboys hour. And then uh, the next week when they play on Monday night, against Tennessee, none of us will be here on Monday night. We'll be there. <laughs> exactly. But we will, have a show on, uh, we will have a show on Tuesday night um, that week. And again, next week. Deontay Thompson uh, is with us right now. Did you notice uh, as much primetime exposure or fan visibility playing for Baltimore, Buffalo, or Chicago as you get here? Oh, no, it's unmatched here. <laughs> it's unmatched. So from a player's perspective, how is it unmatched? Um, when I signed here, uh, it, it was crazy. Like, you know, people was coming from all type of places. I ain't even like so many Cowboy fans everywhere, all over the world. So, Yeah, ho- hold on just a minute. Let's give everybody a chance to properly welcome Rico Gathers. Woo! Cowboys tight end has made it through the rain. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you, you being here. How y'all good. Doing? good, good. So, uh, Deontay was just talking about why, how it's different being a Dallas Cowboy than a Bill or a Raven or a Bear. How, so how is it unmatched? It's unmatched. I mean, I got an Instagram. I had to get an Instagram when I got here. <laughs> I never had an Instagram. So, I mean, it was just like, 
you really in the line life here. Brad did too. Yeah. Brad had to do that as well. Yeah, I kind of did. You're learning that Instagram. <laughs> I, I, Rico's I, been on Instagram. He's been on it, yeah. I just got on it. I've been on it about four months now. Yeah, what do you think four. about it? It's okay, you know. So okay. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, getting used to we'll, it. we'll put you on tonight. Yeah, What's your handle? That is yeah. <laughs> what. Go ahead, tell them your handle if you want to. Uh, what is it? Deontay uh, <laughs> 15, I think. See. Oh, Deontay underscore 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because Rico's is confusing because your Twitter handle is at King Gats, mm -hmm. and then your, I think Instagram is at Rico Gathers Senior. Yeah. Why do you do two different ones? Uh, well, for me, you know, I have mine already established uh, from college, um, and you know they don't let you change it for some reason on Twitter. Dak like changed it. Oh, you changed it? Yeah, I can help you out. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. Taylor well, yeah. can help that you up. out, Rico. Taylor got the plug. <laughs> she the plug. No. I got yeah. the plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's me. I think, that'll Social plug. A, I think that'll make a lot of things easier for me, you know, as far as giving the fans I got you. If you had the same, the same handle? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, well, ta going back Taylor absolutely will, uh, absolutely will hook you up. All right, D, take a deep breath. Relax. You didn't carry the load here for a minute. Oh yeah. Now Rico's here. We're gonna get. We're gonna uh, tell a little bit of the Rico Gathers story. Uh, so uh, thank you for coming. Good to have Appreciate you here. Appreciate yourself, um, Taylor and I were talking about. You know, a lot of people know obviously some of your story. In fact, I remember doing a. I did a bunch of Big Twelve basketball games on television, and I did one your last year at Baylor. I don't remember which game it was, but I know it was in Waco at the Farrell Center, and I remember saying um, you, you, you had cleaned the glass again, and, and I said, I, I don't know if he wants to play basketball or football, but if he doesn't play in the NBA, someone's going to give this guy a chance to be a tight end in the NFL because he's too good an athlete. I had no idea it would be here, right. but when did you – decide that after Baylor, football instead of basketball was what you wanted to try to pursue? Well, because you, you skipped your senior year, right? No, I played. You played senior. your senior year? He graduated, yeah. too, graduated. by the way. But they're both college graduates. Can I have a round on that? Yeah, yeah. education. Yeah. Education yeah. first. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 School first, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but, um, yeah. For me, you know, I had just came off my, um, I had just came off my, you know, first team all Big 12 year, um, you know, went through the whole, you know, should I leave early uh, draft phase. And, you know, my coach, he put in the, the little whatever it is they do, like the evaluation. And, um, you know, they were saying like late first round to, you know, late second round. You, you know, in your was, junior year. Yeah, that was yeah. my range. So uh, from there, you know, I was just thinking to myself, mm, you know, uh, should I take the chance or, you know, should I come back? And, you know, I, ultimately I decided to come back. And uh, went to the, <laughs> I went to the USA Pan Am uh, trial, and from there, um, like you know, I just my my whole mentality towards basketball just changed. Like at the Pan Am trials, or after that? After that, yeah. How um, and why? I don't know. I mean, you know, I just you just started to see like the whole political side mm -hmm. that you know plays a huge part, you know, as far as um, in the NBA. You know, I mean, in the NFL too, but definitely the political side as far as like, you know, what what type of athletes they looking for, uh, who they think could be, you know, the the franchise. The yeah, yeah, you know, the the six nine, mm -hmm. six ten, lean, you know, guys and the stuff Steph like that. Curry's type well, guy. not necessarily Steph Curry, but you know, the the literally the six nine, six ten, <laughs> seven footers. You know, mm -hmm. the stretches, the stretch force, and stuff like that. And you know, from there, I just was like, man, you know, I really want to try something different, you know, I want to be able to go to a sport where I know I can stand out. Now, I, I would be shocked to find out that you didn't have plenty of offers to go make some money playing basketball overseas. Oh, I mean, I had, I had NBA offers, like, even whenever I was, you know, putting the word out that I was going, you know, into the NFL draft, like, I had teams, like, calling, like, saying, no, don't do that, like, <laughs> you know. We, Come play for us. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, we want, we want to give you a, your shot, you know, and stuff like that, but you know, once I had put my, my name in the, in the hat for the NFL, I was just all in. So that, it's an, to me, it's a very interesting process because y you're, you knew you were starting over. Right. I mean, you, you kn nobody had to tell you you hadn't played since 8th right. grade. You knew that. Yeah. A and so why would that be a more attractive option 
then continuing, you had NBA interest, you had professional interest overseas. Why was starting over in football the better option for you at that time? Uh, I mean, football always been exciting. You know, uh, even, you know, when I attended some of the Baylor games, you know, a lot of the games, you know, I went to was like LSU, Alabama, you know, stuff like that, being from Louisiana and stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I always wanted to play football, like always. Like it, it, every year, like since I decided not to play football in high school and college, like somebody was always like, man, like you should play football. And, you know, always, every year I always gave the thought of it, a, you know, a valid yeah, we were response. At- <laughs> you know, like, man, should I play? And, um, you know, going forward, you know, being, you know, about to graduate from Bell, I was like, man, you know, what do I I see myself doing with the next eight to 10 years, 15 years as an athlete? I was like, man, I want to play football. So so here you are uh, at the end of your senior year, and you say, okay, I'm going to play football. But there's a process to how you get representation, put the word out, yeah. try out. What's that process? Um, well, my process, you know, I've always been hands-on. You know, I was like, man, if anybody going to be able to market myself, it's going to be me. So, you know, I literally... <laughs> um, That's kind of scary. Yeah, like <laughs> my, my wife, you know, she would come, you know, they had a little turf field, like right outside the stadium at Bell, and, and like we'll go there. Uh, my teammate, Tori and Prince, he'll come with me. And, um, you know, we were, like, literally, like, just work on routes. Like, this during the season, like, my senior year, like, we're working on football routes. And, during like, the basketball season? Yeah. Like, we, so, we did literally, Coach like, Drew, working. Did Coach Drew know that? Yeah. Oh, he did, like, okay. we showed him videos, and, you know, like, once we, like, started recording the videos, like, ESPN picked up on it immediately. And I was like, you know, can we, can we put this on air, like, during the game? And, you know, that stuff just worked, like, okay. out the blue. We were at training camp, and George Whitfield came by one of the yeah. practices. And, you know, he, like, went up and was talking to Rico, and he came over to me, and he was sharing with me that when George Whitfield was with College Game Day and they were traveling around, they went to college – they went to Waco that mm-hmm. year, and I guess they would do kind of a thing on Friday nights where they would be shooting in the gym, just kind of yeah. him, David Pollock, Pollock yeah. sometimes, like – I think her curb street a few times. I don't know. But they came in there, and Rico was in there, and they started talking to him about playing football. And he said that he kind of kept up with you and mm-hmm. wanted to see how you were doing. And then, you know, this is, this is really your first year. Boy. He had his first career reception two weeks ago. So I know. I was there. Y- yeah. You were there. Yeah. You called it. <laughs> I did. I did call it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's just that full circle moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a, a process, you know, a transition, you know. And, um, I mean, it's been, you know, I had my ups and downs. Last year I thought, you know, I was going to be able to step on the field and, you know, make an impact, you know, after I was doing everything I was doing. But, you know, things kind of set me back. And, uh, you know, this year it's just been a grinded out, you know, really fight for what you want type of type of year for me you're still learning oh yeah <laughs> each and every day how, how much can you describe how much you've learned or how different you are as a football player today than from when you decided to come out and got drafted by the Cowboys oh totally different um <laughs> I mean even going back and looking looking at some of the pitches just you know in the way that I run 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 with the football now is totally different uh, my approach to, you know, studying studying the game is a whole lot different. Um, you know, for the, for the most part, like, what I've learned mostly, like, you know, as much as we strategize during the week and stuff and we game plan, we work our technique, we work, uh, you know, everything that we work on that goes into, you know, one day, which is, you know, Sunday, you know, whenever you kick off, is mostly just, you know, getting out there and, really having to want to to execute, you know, because it's not going to be perfect, you know, and that's one of the things that coach always tell us, tells us it's not going to be perfect, but it's all about the strain and the finish. I know we have to go to a break soon, but, you know, you're saying how you'd always wanted to play football. Deontay, you ever hit the basketball court? Um, I played up until 10th grade. I almost was a track and football guy. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Multi-sport guy. Yeah. But you think you could take Rico on? Uh, <laughs> Rico, a big guy. No, I, I will tell you. That Beasley probably wants to try to take you on. Be- Beasley got Beasley can play though. He, he got to jump. Yeah, jump. There's I mean, a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys on this football team who, especially before you got here, 
thought would they were say, hooping. oh, I'm the best basketball player on this team. Right. There's a bunch of them <laughs> on the defensive side of the ball. Now, I hope the answer to this is yes. Are you the best basketball player on the team? I mean, statistically and um, with the years that I've put into it, yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of my teammates would argue, you know what I mean? Who, Definitely. Would, you, who would argue? Bees on Cole. number one. Yeah, Cole, Cole is Cole. Bees think he's the he's best Cole. basketball player on the planet. Like, he, he got a jumper, quick. Know. Like, his jump shot is Van Der Esch won a state championship in basketball. See, you talked, yeah, really? he did. Wow. He did. I, didn't, I never knew. Small I town. Uh, but. Taylor was no, right. We, we do have to take a break. But when we come back, I think we should pursue a little bit about what a what a Gathers versus Beasley one-on-one <laughs> matchup because there we have sponsors here. So much music would be happening. Yes, oh, yeah. rappers. We have we have potential sponsors right here to make something like that happen. It's the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, brought to you by Albertsons. Albertsons, when it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. And also, big thanks to Jack Black. Want to use what the pros use? Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Get your Jack Black Playmaker for JB Faves plus a full-size lip balm for just 10 bucks with free shipping at getjackblack.com. Use code COWBOYS. I can't believe I said that all the way through. And you did. You were great. We'll be right back with Deontay Thompson and Rico Gathers on the Cowboys Hour. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham and Taylor Stern, our special guests, Rico Gathers and Deontay Thompson this evening on Victory Monday. Victory Monday. Now. To to be followed by a Victory Tuesday this week. And next week, we will be here on Tuesday night. We'll give you, we're we're not 100% locked in on the, uh, are we locked in on the guests yet? Not 100%. Mm -hmm. Like 85%. We'll hold off until we're 100%. But we'll let you know. But it's Tuesday night. Next week, and if the weather's better, we'll be right back over there at the uh, at the Omni Frisco. Guys, Conor McGregor basically took over the game yesterday. Oh, yeah. Once he was there, <laughs> once you saw him on social media on the big screen, the jumbotron of AT and T Stadium, it seemed like he inspired the whole game. Mm-hmm. Were you guys pumped to see him out there? What did it? Were you indifferent? Is either, first I mean, of all, is either of you a... a boxing fan? Uh, well, it's not boxing. Yeah. UFC? I'm, I'm, UFC. Boxing. I'm a boxing fan. But uh, now, nah, I mean, just, you know, seeing him, you know, like, actually in person and stuff, like, it was a good feeling. I he's mean, tiny. Yeah, he's yeah, tiny. He's small. <laughs> but, you know, like, that just lets you know. Like I said um, yesterday when somebody asked me, it was just, you know, you never know who will be at a Cowboys game. And, uh, you know, just being able to see Conor McGregor. That's like, what you were talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? That's, like, exactly. But, I, I mean... You, you don't ever know. You really know. never know. know. I remember when I was with Chicago, we came and played here, and 50 Cent was walking yeah, around 50 the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah. that, too. Yeah, he yeah, was I, the I was like, boy, everybody at the Cowboys game. Well, yeah. exactly Rico right. alluded to it a little bit earlier. Your preseason play last year going into the 2017 season was great, and it really started with that Hall of Fame game. Right followed by that Hall of Fame weekend right. that I don't think anyone can ever top again. Jerry no. Jones Hall of Fame party. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. Warren Buffett. <laughs> like, I'm glad you named Warren Buffett first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you know, Warren just Buffett. being in the same room as a Warren Buffett, you know, I actually mentioned that in one of my songs, thanks to, you know, Mr. Jones. You know, I was able to mention it. Do you think Cowboys Hour will get a mention in any of your future reps? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should. I, I think I'm actually should. working on, you know, a, a, theme, a game day theme song. Oh, yes. Okay, now, so we know a little bit about Cole, Cole Beasley's musical career. Right. But tell, tell people more about yours. Um, you know, I'm more of the traditional rapper um, nowadays. Uh, <laughs> you understand how for somebody like me, those two words don't go together. Right. Traditional, traditional rapper. 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 That's, that's yeah, I mean, you know, just traditional and, the, you know, I would, I would call my, my rap, you know, Southern Twang. Um, but, I mean, you know, music is mainly like my... It's like my release. Yeah. I get a I get a release. You know, I talk about a lot of things within my music. Um, You know, not just 
you know, like one of my songs. I know. <laughs> I, I was mad at him for one of his titles. I came up to him and I was but, like, I do not like your title. Can I, can but, I guess that we cannot repeat it on No, we're not going to repeat that. Yeah. But, I said, but I mean, you're even, a good even, guy. Even like I told I know, like, you know, just because the title is what it is, like the, the stuff within the song, like you just got to listen to the words within the song. I like, need to get past that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And, don't, don't let the title spook you out. Like, it's, it's stories <laughs> behind So an title. hour before the game, headphones? Yeah. What are you listening to? To? Um, or who? Hmm. Yourself? Myself. I yeah. gotta listen to myself because, like I said, I speak a lot of stuff that I, you know, I deal with. You know, so um, a lot of motivation for okay. myself within my music. Who else? Uh, Kevin Gates, um, mm. Money Man, um, Lil Wayne. Uproar. Yeah. So you know, Lil Wayne, Kevin Gates, and Money Man right now. That's that's my top. Deontay. YouTube music before the game. Um, I kind of vary. Different week, I'd be on different people, but for the most part, um, probably got a little Rick Ross in there, some Tupac. Um, I listen to Juicy before every game. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Notorious B.I.G. I'm a little bit older. Uh, <laughs> And, um, it's all relative, that's it. yeah, that's It's all relative, I got to tell you. That's, that's, that's what been consistently played. But I listen to everything, you know, from Lil Baby, all those guys. Yeah. Lil Baby's new, I heard. Yeah, he's new. I'm surprised they didn't name my sister Alex Stern. Lil you baby. know, they're just jamming. When is your sister? Did you know that Alex, her sister, is a, is a professional singer? Yeah. Yeah, she's a singer in Nashville. I mean, it's a little southern twang that's for southern you. Southern twang? Yeah. yeah, she got that southern twang. <laughs> when is she coming here? Soon. Titans game. Okay, we'll of course. You got to get on the feature, yeah. man. Go in and set it I'm up. About that. I'm about but that. But you're not titling your song. No, we're not. Yeah. No. We're we'll, we'll, we gonna, we'll, we gonna, we gonna let her title you are the song. Not titling it that. Will Alex? <laughs> will Alex sing like on the night after the game on yeah. Tuesday night here? Yeah. Okay. Could she and Rico maybe do something yes. together? Yes. Sure. I Let's see it. it. Let's do it. Rico's like, what are you I'm going to get back for? to you because we're going to put that together. I think that would be fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Like, it's I mean, done deal. I'm about I'll, it. Okay. I'll get you a new Twitter handle. Yeah. You sing with my sister. All right. Okay. Very good. Deal, uh, deal. I, I want <laughs> to right, look. I want to come back to the field for just a minute because so w when you saw Rico in person, when you were in practice with him, and I mean, there's tight ends are getting bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. but they don't all look like this. No, nah, that's a big guy. Yeah, what, what did you what did you think when you saw Rico? I didn't know he played tight end at first. I thought he was like a DN, big yeah. old DN son. Look, D line, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> totally could be. Yeah, but then I seen him out there at tight end. He was running like, man, that big boy can run. You know, then I seen him play. <laughs> you said it like that? No, not no exact words. <laughs> and but please don't, like, please like, don't hey. repeat the exact words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't yeah. like that. I was like, um, He's a hell of an athlete for to be that big. I Man, he can move good for his size. Rico, when did you have the thought that okay, that was a dream? Then I got drafted. I've been doing all this stuff to get right. But wait, I might actually be good enough at this to actually do it. When did you start thinking that? Oh, uh, I mean, really, you know, going through my 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 you know rookie transition, uh, and you know, coming to the practice squad, working throughout that whole year. And, you know, being able to work with Tony, I think, you know, Tony, he really gave me my, my confidence, you know, just being able to work with him because I was just like, man, I'm working with a Hall of Famer, like, you know what I mean? And, you know, although, like, you know, the, the circumstances of why we was working together weren't, you know, to his favor, uh, you know, I, took, I made the, the most of it because it was just like a legendary moment for myself. You and, know? and he says that, and he was in a room with Jason Witten, who's another Hall of Famer, you know, too. Yeah, and I mean, you know, just being around those type of caliber of players, um, and, you know, they giving you, you know, confidence, you know, telling you, you know, everything that you might be doing wrong or what you can work on and stuff like that, helping you get better. I mean, it, you know, you, you can't do nothing but go up from there. So to me, one of the there was a plus and a minus for last year. I mean, obviously, two years ago, practice squad, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're in practice and meetings all the time. Last year, mm -hmm. you couldn't practice because you're on injured reserve. Right. So this year, just from the – let's just take it to – we can take to OTAs if you want. Yeah. But uh, how, how much better have you gotten since just this year? Well, I, I really credit me getting better to uh, my coach, um, Coach Doug. I mean, he does a great job with all of us. And um, really, he just broke the game down for me um, and just put it to my understanding. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, just how he, he stresses the technique, the technical side of it. 
uh, and really focuses on that with me. Um, you know, that, that's really made me a whole, a complete, completely different player than what I was. I mean, last year I was just playing off raw talent. This year I'm actually knowing, you know, what, I'm, what I need to do every play. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, but you kind of just answered it. You know, when you're talking about that setback that you had last year and then this is something that wasn't necessarily your first sport right. and you have to keep that passion, that momentum going, right. especially for you too, you know mm -hmm. I mean? You're in your seventh season and yeah. it, you can get yourself down real easy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys keep yourself going and saying, I love this game? Music. Music? What's your <laughs> <laughs> easy one there? Uh, I mean, just really just to keep the love going. You just got to keep it fun. Yeah. I mean, once the fun leave is over, I always tell people that, especially young players. I mean, over the guy, Ray Lewis told me that, you know, one of his speeches, he was speaking to the team, just like, man, if it ain't fun, you might always hang it up. It got to be fun. Because, I mean, sometimes, you know, if you get caught up in the business side and this and that and who getting traded, how much money you got, you lose interest in the fun to leave. You're so worried about the business. Isn't it a little bit of what Scott Linehan's message was last week? About having fun, yeah. not about the business side, but yeah, about gotta have fun. Man. He always stressed that. Yeah. yeah, fun. When you having fun out there, is, that energy still got that fire burning. You know yeah. what I mean? Just like he was when you was a kid. I told my wife we had this camp this summer, um, and the kids that we had out there, they was doing one on ones from my old high school, and it, it got real competitive. And they had me over there, man. I started my palms sweating just watching them, just because <laughs> they doing it just yeah. out of the love, just fun, and that and it gave me that. Just put that thing back in me like this is what it's all about, you know. Uh, Rico just said something that uh, that triggered a thought in my head. Oh, hold up your hand, the nice folks who come out here tonight. Who's a coach? Anybody coach? We got, got one, one coach. There? Great. Um, it's hard when, job. When you were talking about Doug Nussmeyer a minute ago, I, I thought because I had the opportunity. You, you guys never see the uh, assistant coaches at work. Uh, we get to see them up close in training camp and, and we get to know them a little bit. I've been to Baylor basketball practices. I know how Coach Drew and the mm -hmm. assistant coaches coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there's some um, urging and prompting, and sometimes there's some serious coaching. Right. Sometimes it's, it, you, you better not bring bruisable feelings right. in there. Right. Mm -hmm. how, how do you both find that you respond to being coach? D, how do you, how do you what kind of coaching gets the most out of you? Um, I think when it's a respect that get the most out of me. I mean, in college, though, everybody get mf then. Yeah, Urban Meyer, <laughs> yeah. Urban Meyer was that not happens. always nice to you in practice. Oh, no, nah, you're going to get mf all that in college, you know, but mostly at the professional level, it's a, I just, it's a respect thing, you know. Um, men. As we, we all men, you know, we all adults, so, you know, you just tell us once. And if we don't get it right correctly, then most most coaches too, they patient with it. You know, they got to keep correcting you on something, then they get pissed off because they feel like you're a grown man. They should not have to keep telling you something. But besides that, it's mostly about respect. It's a respect thing. And you know, you're playing for your coach. Like with me, with Sanjay, we always tell you, you know what I mean? We play for you, coach. You know, we, we want to make you look good. So it's all about that. Is there any similarity to what uh, Nussmeyer and Linehan? And Garrett, the way they coach compared to Drew and the and the assistants at Baylor, uh, different sport. I'd say they they true um, MF guys. All of them. <laughs> yeah, they true they true MF guys. Cause Drew is more, um, you know, laid. He's more laid back. Um, I've seen him get excited now. He gets excited, but it's not like that type of excited. <laughs> you know, he 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 holds his water with you know what he says and stuff like that. And not, um, I think, um, you know, all in all, like, I think the message still gets across, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. what what's being said. I mean, you know, whether you're getting MF'd about it or you, you know, you're getting told in a respectful manner, you know what I mean? It's just about receiving a message. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, most importantly, that's, that's what I look forward to. Okay, Nussmeier, I like Nussmeier, but he does seem to me to be a guy who, who would get a little excited. For oh, yeah. Time. Nah, he nah, he's funny, though, man. Like, um, you know, me and him, we always, you know, going back and forth. But, I mean, I know that it's always for the better of my, my game. Rico Gathers and Deontay Thompson are guests tonight on the Cowboys Hour. Your questions uh, in just a moment. Steven's got the microphone. He'll be coming uh, back into the audience to talk to you. We want to remind you that we are brought to you on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour in part by Omni next time you travel for an away game. 
Here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. They're right, they're right back there, right, right over there. Uh, shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is. Say it. He, Rico wanted to read it today. Oh, okay. Lucchese Bootmaker. Bootmaker. Now we're there. <laughs> we'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. Back, back, back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. We are back here with the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. We have Deontay Thompson and Rico Gathers. But with big thanks to Papa John's tonight when the Cowboys win, which they did yesterday, you get 50% off regular menu price pizzas the next day at papajohns.com with promo code COWBOYSWIN. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Not valid with any other discounts, prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. And thank you always to Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Nicely done. Thank you very much. Uh, Questions from the audience in just a moment. We are with Deontay Thompson and Rico Gathers tonight at the Ford Center at the Star on the Cowboys Hour. And uh, next week again on Tuesday night, that will not be a regular occurrence. But some travel logistics will uh, demand that next week's show will be on Tuesday night. Um, so, uh, Rico, before you got here, we were talking to Deontay about uh, the offense in general and, you know, how, how yesterday's results get duplicated a little bit. I want to narrow it down for you before we take some questions out there. How close do you feel you are to being... Uh, a little bit more of of a target, something that they look for a little bit more than you to get that. once or twice a game. Tuddy. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think um, it's coming. Um, but you know, we we just trying to you know figure it out. You know, what what do we all have? You know what I mean? And obviously, we got the talent. Um, but you know, it's all about being able to go out there and you know put it put it on on display. And, um, you know, if we can have more games like yesterday where, you know, everybody getting in the end zone, everybody contributing, and, you know, it was, it was fun, man, just being out there, uh, you know, being able to put up that many points and the defense, you know, getting stops the way they do. But um, I think, um, you know, for me, you know, I'm not, really, I'm not really worried about, you know, when I'll get in the end zone. I know it's coming. Uh, I know that, you know, I'll be able to contribute um, as soon as possible. Um, okay on that end but you know I'm just I'm just glad we're getting doves that's the only thing you know uh, and Taylor Taylor just mentioned that and it, so you you were in the end zone in the Detroit game right mm-hmm. and it was a third down route would you would you do anything different with that route if you had it over to, to run it again no I wouldn't do anything different um I think you know the positioning was right there I just think you know it was a miss missed opportunity that's all now before we get to our fan questions Rico gathers. I'm looking at you for that touchdown celebration. When you do get that, that. Was, that's, that's the other hey, thing I want to know. Are we on the same page here? We're on here? the same because page. Deontay Thompson, I hope you're involved here. Yeah. And I say that because I hope they do something where it's very basketball related. Now, if you're like, nope, that's past that life. That would be so cliche. <laughs> that would be so cliche. It's going to be something crazy. You know, I got some. I got and I feel like, Deontay, related. you got something planned too? Um. No, not really. I just give it all to God. <laughs> hey, that's the best way. Uh, but see, I, you said I just, you did. I just heard you say that you had something different. I got yeah, I got some basketball related. Basketball related. Related. Yeah, related. I know but it's, him. It's, y'all gonna y'all gonna see it. Y'all gonna be like, wow, like can't believe it just happened. <laughs> all right, I, 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 I can't. I mean, you are playing in the NFL. I can believe it'll happen. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be. You know, real basketball related. All right. I am looking forward to that. Okay, Stephen. All right. No, Let's hope I, I don't watch this. We got Bron Lu, the gentleman that y'all met earlier with a question. Okay. From Bermuda. Yes. Bermuda. Uh, good evening, everybody from Bermuda. Greetings to everybody. Uh, Texas are great hosts. Rico, you go through training camp. 
Here it is now, you make the first cut. Now, the second cut is when old players get cut down to 53. What is it like not knowing that you're gonna make the team? Mm. This final 24 hours. What is it like oh, going through that what process? What a great question. Good question. Yeah. What a great <laughs> question. <laughs> um, honestly, you know, it's out of your hands. Um, you can literally just sit and really just, just pray and hope, you know, that you get to see your, huh? Ulcers? Any huh? ulcers from, from, from nervousness or anything like that? Oh, I mean, yeah, definitely nervous. I mean, you know, you can ask my wife and my family about all that, you know, uh, <laughs> just, just being nervous. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, you know what I mean? Just not knowing, like, am I going to be here? Is it over? Do you love me? Are you riding? Like, <laughs> Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> that was well played. Okay, Stephen? Yeah, we got Larry here. Oh, got cut out. Larry here with a question. Hello. Uh, glad you guys are on the team. I want to ask both of you, as far as uh, your alma mater's high school, Ooh. have you gone back to, uh, I know you did, DeMonte mentioned it earlier, but I frequently do it, like my alma mater, uh, I've got two Jones brothers who, you know, from two different NFL teams, go back to their high school and they do a lot of uh, visiting and, and trying to encourage their players of uh, that high school. Do you do the same thing? Another great question. Deontay, tell them about that a little bit. Um, yeah, um, I go back a lot. Um, you know, I come from, a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bell Glade, Florida. Uh, it's a little small town in Florida. A um, little bit low, below the Lake Okeechobee. It's not much to do there. You know, kids can really get pulled into the wrong direction if you're not, you know, on them. So me, I just try to go back and be that, that image for them, just show them that it's possible being what a, from there. Your foundation? Yeah. Um, yeah, my foundation, we does a lot there. Um, we, last year we did a college tour. We took um, over 30 kids on a, on a college tour throughout the state of Florida, um, had great success. Um, we do football camps, we do uh, Christmas drives with the kids. We go to the elementary schools in the, in the community, um, do like Secret Santa. So it's just, you know, just, just giving back, just inspiring the youth, man, just trying to be positive, just showing them that it's a way out, uh, that it, anybody can do it, you know. I'm a kid from the project, so if I could do it, you could do it. Rico, we got about 15 seconds left. You go back to your high school in Louisiana? Uh, for me, you know, I go back to the community because my, my, my area, you know, I'm, it's so small. Everybody right. knows one another. Um, I went to private school, by the way, so, you know, but I'm cool. You know, the, the public school was right up the street. So, you know, I would have to do something, you know, for the community uh, as a whole. We're, great, we're grateful that you're here tonight. Thanks for Woo. being with us on the Cowboys Hour.